The dead flow, an iceberg in the southern sea, continues to grow unchecked. As the ice spreads, so too do wild tales of a hideous dragon rampaging across the dead fire. The dragon, Nereskirlas, no longer passes between Aeora and the White Void, and the dead flow slowly breaks apart, exposing the temple long frozen within. Under Halfjorn's guidance, the harbingers of dusk resettle within Remergon's temple, vowing to forever protect it from the defiling touch of outsiders. Over time, the group becomes increasingly reclusive and fanatical, attacking any who dare approach their holy site. The Harbingers of Dusk eventually resettle within and around Remergon's temple. Under Vatanir's leadership, the settlement flourishes, becoming a prominent port of call along trading routes to and from the Dead Fire. Hafjorn leads the remaining Harbingers of Dusk on a return pilgrimage to the White That Wins, and they scatter into the clans and settlements from which they hailed. The Temple of Remergond falls into disrepair, home only to madmen and monsters. Vatnir escaped Harbinger's watch with his life, but with none of his authority. He wanders the dead fire alone, preaching of Remergon's inevitable triumph while weathering the revulsion and derision of those he ministers to. Having tested himself against the White Void, Vatnir does not long remain content at Harbinger's watch. He sets forth into the dead fire, spreading word of his god while serving in a series of wildly disreputable privateer crews. Vatnir tries to hold the Harbingers of Dusk together, and for a time, succeeds. The group resettles within and around the temple, vowing to protect it. Eventually, however, Remergon's godlike falters, and his followers sacrifice him to the White Void. The temple of Remergon falls into disrepair, home only to madmen and monsters. Having vowed to enact Remergon's will as his dusk speaker, you find the god of decay and disaster a consistent presence in your life. You soon learn that there are innumerable objects, institutions, and people in need of ending. And the beast of winter does not hesitate in tasking you with ensuring those conclusions. The chime of Remergond continues to pulse coldly within your breast. Though the beast of winter rarely intrudes upon you, the chill within your soul promises that you will return to his dominion in the end. In besting the beast of winter, you earned the death god's mercy rather than his enmity. The deity remains characteristically unforthcoming about his decision, and you're left to wonder whether in doing battle with him in the white void, you somehow furthered his apocalyptic ambitions. You rarely think of Edwin, the toll you paid to leave the white void. Her features and expressions, the sound of her voice, and her very name become increasingly difficult to call to mind. Even her contributions to the field of animacy fall into obscurity, relegated to a few moldering tomes tucked away in the darkest recesses of the remotest libraries. Having convinced the god of decay and disaster of your usefulness, you find your return to the living world plagued by his influence. Though he makes few overt demands of you, you sense Remergon's hand in the troubled times that follow. With each faction you foil and enemy you overcome, chaos spreads. And with it, the legend of the Dusk Speaker. From her phylactery, Nereskilos whispers to you still. <laughs>